Hi everyone, um, of course you know this is uh, Leona Sylvester. I haven't um, posted a video in a while, just been a bit busy. Um, so today I'm, I'm coming to you guys, um, I have a, uh, Richard Branson has a challenge. So Richard Branson has a challenge. His challenge basically, how do you think air travel will have changed in basically 10 years time? I had to use 25 words or less. This was difficult. Um, this video is not going to be edited. I'm just doing it from scratch, last minute kind of thing. I need to get it in by 4 p.m. Australian time. And I believe right now it's about 1, I had to look it up, 1.34 p.m. And I have to get it in by 4 p.m. Um, I don't know why I did it last minute, but I did it last minute. So basically, um, I jotted down some stuff. I got like two pages and a half long, but I had to use 25 words. So these are my 25 words, and then I'll explain to you in depth what they are. So basically, the way I see air travel within the next 10 years, um, empty seat deal notification, so no plane will fly with empty seats. Smart tag luggage tracker, you can follow your, your luggage basically from the time it gets on the plane through when it gets off, where it goes when it gets off, but when it hits the baggage claim belt, as it processes through the baggage came belt, almost like the Domino's delivery tracker, kind of. You can track it through the app and see it. Um, you can even, t well, we can't, but uh, good data for the airlines. The airlines itself can see how many times your luggage was stopped, open, checked, and how long it sat somewhere without being moved. Um, but we wouldn't get that. The airlines would get that data. Um, message and play games against other passengers. See the highest score. I think that's so cool. Um, I actually had that idea when I flew Virgin Airlines. Um, what was the year was that? About probably five years ago, four years ago, when I went to Europe, I don't remember. But I thought it'd be so cool, and I had a bunch of I'd, other ideas, but I can't fit all in here. But anyways, where you could message anonymous passengers, <laughs> or if your friends on the on the plane with you and sitting somewhere else, you could type in her seat and message her. Um, you could play games against people, and I have a bunch of cool games that is. But play games, who got the highest score, try to beat the highest score. Most of the time, when you're playing with them, it's anonymous, so you won't really know who that person is unless you know the person. They told you that was their nickname, etc. Um, giving you guys the experience and it'll be all types of games like brain games, word games, jewels, stuff like that. Um, even action games where you can interact with other people and stuff. No Pokey Go though. No Pokey Bango. <laughs> um, power fell. Clean energy power aircraft. Um, so like about, I think it was four weeks ago, I recorded for my nephew. I like to get him watching different things so he can learn about different things. But, um, we was watching, I think it's The Strangest things and because they have it like changes jobs changes places to live something like that. but anyways the one with the innovation um there was actually a um, piece on power felt and how you can use your body heat to um, power your phone and basically by use using this power felt which is the material that the shirt is made out of and the way it works is that the heat from your body plus the cool air hitting the other side so the heat from one side and the cool air from the other side creates this energy which then you can use to charge things and even in that that um, little clip the video that they had on that channel can't remember if it was sci-fi but I think it was sci-fi they had shown the power felt on airline seats and how it would be used to energize the aircraft. Um, like, I guess, internal stuff. But um, I'm thinking if you could probably put the power felt on the outside of the plane as well, it could then produce more energy where it could actually power the plane itself to fly. Um, but I'm not 100% sure if it will be cool energy coming out because you're close to the sun. Hence, it's not my um, thing. But if, hey, Richard Branson wants me to, I can look into deeper into it and solve the problem but since i did this last minute i don't have the, all the in-depth to it but um, i'm sure it's possible anything's possible um so i'm gonna go into depth because that was 25 words empty seat deal notification smart tag luggage tracker message and play games against other passengers see the highest scores power filled clean ng power aircraft 25 <laughs> words i don't think anybody reads that's gonna quite understand the depth of it they're probably thinking it's hmm, simple but it's more cooler than it sounds. So I made this video so whoever sees it and want to learn more about it can click and actually um, get more information. So hence, I did this all today, so do not remember it by heart. My mind goes a million miles per hour and there's a million things on my mind. So I will be reading from this. I'm gonna try my best to um, read up even though it's kind of late. All right, so here's an in-depth uh, version. Uh, so basically I start off with what do we have to make these certain things that I'm talking about possible because in order to make something possible you have to have 
uh, bring it to the market or the market the, the world has to be ready for it or we have to have the data um, because sometimes you bring things too early it fails because people are not ready for it you don't have all the information you need you don't have the technology that's needed or the technology at that point is not cheap so it becomes costly and that's why things take forever to develop which is silly but hey anyways so basically we have data data from apps data from tons of things so we can see where uh, you are you have new data and old data so basically old data will tell us which new data will tell you us what you did today old data will tell us what you did a year ago even about 10 or five years ago um, many apps have access to your contacts your calendars your, um, your who you like on Facebook your families your friends um, when their birthdays are when their holidays are um, see uh, so say today last year you wished let's say Leona is a person's name because that's what I wrote here I had Mary but I said, let me put my name in there anyway right so, <laughs> so say you wish Leona a happy birthday you sent her a, uh, a post a month ago saying I missed you um, Leona lives in California you live in um, New York so your Virgin Airlines app or Priceline or Kayak, whatever app you're using, because all different companies can use this because they all have the data. They can all get the data. Everyone has access to data. Um, where would I left off at? But anyways, app. They can see that you're near JFK and they can say, um, or you don't have to be near JFK for this example, but it could say, um, send your notification. Um, because Virgin Airlines has a few, one or a few seats available, it's around leaving at 6 p.m. or the next day, depending on how many empty seats they have, if, they can, if they're willing to, to give off some for the next day. Most of the cases, they will probably try to give, give away seats that's for the same day um, to you. Basically, willing to give it to you at 50% off. So they basically say, hey, you know, um, Virgin Airlines have flights to California, 50% off, this is the price. Accept, do not accept. We see that you have... Alyssa's in California and you miss her, it'd be a great time, it's her birthday coming up, surprise her. Or it's an anniversary coming up, surprise her. We can see all that data, you gave us access to it, right? So um, that's an example. Basically, and in this way, it gives you about two hours to book that flight or um, say yes to it and accept it and get ready. That's not where you got time to make arrangement, tell your boss you're not coming into work, you know, if you have kids, make arrangements and figure some stuff out. Um, for another, say another example, say John is traveling to Europe, uh, traveled to Europe four years ago. He got a notification, hey, we miss you. We see um, that you use your frequent flyer, you fly a lot, but you haven't flew to Europe in, uh, in a couple of years. You know, we have a new market in certain ways. You know, I'm kind of rushing this. To fly to Europe because um, you're a frequent flyer, you can do so. All you have to do is pay the return flight. So basically for a frequent flyer, someone who spends lots of money with your airlines, you have an empty seat. You know you're going to have the empty seat. It's not going to get booked. You send him this notification. He has two hours to answer you and it's either accept or do not accept. He doesn't accept. It's fine because he will remember that, hey, you know, they reached out to me. They were willing to fly me for free. I just had to pay my return flight, which is probably a fraction of the course it would cost me to go. But I couldn't go because I didn't have the money or whatever. But, you know, they thought about me. He'll tell his, the story to everybody. Next time he has to fly, he'll think about Virgin Airlines. He'll share, tell everybody about the app. Everyone will download the app. More data for you to collect. Information. It goes on and on. Um, for people who don't travel, but they have the app because, you know, their friend was like, oh, get this app. It's cool. They're like, hey, you know, we have... Um, have to see you have two hours or three hours to accept or do not accept um, you have to do is play the return flight and if they accept you know they fly and you're introducing people to traveling you know I think once someone gets on a flight and they fly somewhere and they see and they learn and they see the cultures and change some people you know it takes with them and it's like oh I got to travel some more I want to travel here I want to travel there I want to see this I want to see that I had so much fun let me go back I met these people um, yeah they have to book like air, um, not airlines, uh, car rentals or um, what do you call it, hotel rooms. But the way the app, the the app gets its data, will most of the cases will link you to places that you know people, people that you talk to, people that you visited, or if you never fly before, people that you talk to a lot of family members. You know, you have a cousin, her birthday's coming up. I don't know if you know her, but here's the deal: you go stay at your cousin. Um, but I'm sure in the app they'll have package deals where it'll be like two nights, three rooms, night stay deals and stuff like that. They can link people to as well. So it's just more and more things and commodities you can link in together and build that up. But um, I think that get people, more people traveling, more people liking airlines, and 
instead of flying the airplane airplane empty just give a seat away give a, give a, give a give a seat away and get money coming back cuz you're going to get money come back if you left 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 it empty no one's going and less people coming back basically um so yeah some people may fly one way and say shoots let me move <laughs> but anyways um i think it's a great idea um people would definitely t i would take advantage of it i travel a lot um i used to travel a lot i haven't traveled a lot this year actually i have let's take that back not as much as I usually do, but I did. Um, so let's get back on topic. Uh, so next thing I have here, uh, we see that you're in the area. We have flights leaving within two hours except for decline. So some of these flights, they're leaving later in the evening. They're leaving um, probably tomorrow. But say you, there'll be even deals where the flight is at this last minute and we still have empty seats. So basically, anyone who has the app up within vicinity of the airport or close to an airport and get to the airport within an hour so they can get through check, check in, transfer, and make that two hour flight. They say, We have this deal. The flight leaves in two hours. You want it or not? And they show you, send you the price. It'd probably be like $50, $25. You probably pay for your baggage or whatever. But stop letting these flights fly empty, with empty seats. Like, I flew on flights and the, the whole, half the plane is empty. Even more than half the plane is empty. I'm like, What are, what are we doing? Where is this flight going? So. It's 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 profitable, and I guess we can fill the planes up every time we fly. Well, not we, because it's not my airlines, but you know what I mean. Then the next thing I have here is Smart Tag Luggage Beta. So basically, with the Smart Tag lug Luggage Beta, it's beta because um, sounds better, right? <laughs> um, so they got a lot of new luggage coming out. These luggage are pretty cool. I've seen the one where you sit on and you just drive through the airport. I think I need that in my life. But anyways, I need to have a back seat or something for my baby, because now I have a baby, to carry the baby in, okay? While I'm on there, because I will be scrolling through it. He's too young to drive his own yet. Unless I can remote control his while I'm sitting on mines and driving mines, and that would be pretty cool. But anyways, so Smart Tag Luggage Beta. So basically with the Smart Tag Luggage Beta, you can choose to, if you want to have a Smart Tag. I'm trying to figure out the best way of doing it, where the customer purchases their own Smart Tag or where you pay a deposit. And um, you get the deposit back when you return the smart tag. So basically, a smart tag is just a tag. And I was first, I was thinking you stick it on the handle, but then I was like, it will stick on in through the loops of the zippers for the the luggage. All luggage have zippers, so um, that way you can also track whether your lug when the luggage was open and closed. So the smart tag will have a tracker on it. Um, basically, the airlines can see how long it sat somewhere, how many times it was open and closed, if the smart tracker came off of the luggage and is now separated from the luggage. Um, and that would give the airlines more information about luggage loss and security and how things get lost and how they get mishandled and stuff, and they could use that data to better that process. But what it also do for the passenger is basically, it's almost like, a, like the Domino's delivery tracker. You can actually see, for security purposes, you know, I don't want nobody. Oh, my thing is right there now. Let's set up a, a bomb or something. But yeah, let's take that out. But for security purposes, um, the the tracker will not go on until the actual airbag reach the um, the aircraft. The airlines can track it throughout the whole process, but you yourself cannot see it until your bag actually gets when it's getting loaded onto the plane. That way, it went through security. They scanned it. They checked it. They opened it. Made sure there's no anything special with the bag, other than the smart. A luggage tracker and um, at that point you can see oh my bag is getting on the plane when you transfer to your next plane oh, almost my bag got on the plane oh wait my plane's taking off my bag never got there you can hit it go in the app hit with my bag before and they'll see it too that it's not with the passenger it's separating it's going further away be it's still where you are with the app and the, where the tracker is um when you're getting off the plane you can see where your bag is and the app will give you estimated time of normal rate of process of unloading and loading a plane on how long it's going to take for your bag to actually get to baggage claim um and that way you can basically track your bag you can see when it gets to baggage claim when it gets through the door and on the belt you can see not see it itself but see the process and the line of it moving through the process in the app um there was something else i was gonna say um keep looking away right um so basically that's it with the uh smart act tracker so if your bag isn't on the plane before you can give bag tags so if it if you do do it where there's a deposit and you to get it then you get when you return it you get it back i'm just trying to figure out the way a way 
where if you don't own it, the airline gets it back, because I don't think it's a cheap way to make it, and I don't like to waste raw material on creep using things. I'm sure there's a cheap way to make those tags these days, but to, to waste them is not. So they got there's two ways it could be done. You could have your own smart tracker and just scan it and put it on your phone and track it, or you can get it from the airlines. I can go into depth later. Anyways, this is just an idea. It starts off an idea, and then you gotta actually create an idea, right? And then that's when you go through the figuring out how it's gonna actually work and look and etc. So the next thing I have here is the airlines can see how many times. Yeah, I got that information. So basically, like back going back to the app notifications. Basically, the app will be able to see holidays, birthdays, events you went to in the past, um, airline deals, and drop everything deals on your phone. So basically, the airline deals are those empty seats. The drop everything deals are the deals where you have two hours to accept, decline, get to the airport, and you're off. Those are the drop everything deals. I like that, drop everything. But anyways, um, and it will be based on data from your social media, data that you put in if you put in your family history, and we'll just remind you, you know. Or it also reminds you, hey, we have a deal from um, California to New York, you know. Do you want to take advantage of the deal? Send me on a ticket. Send your mother a ticket. So they'll also have deals for family members if you choose to receive notification when there's deals. Um, say your daughter, like you're a, single, you're a single father, your daughter lives with her mom, like 50-50 custody or something, I don't know. And um, there's a deal coming up in summertime, she's off. Like, oh, let me take advantage of this. Let me fly her in, let me, you know. Spend more time with your family. Time is short. Life is short. Who the hell? Who knows? I mean, remove the other word I just said. <laughs> um, when flying, you can text message people or uh, on the on this by the seat number. So basically, use the seat number to text message people, or you can anonymously text message people. But the airline, of course, will know who's text messaging who. <laughs> just it's if you do the anonymous this one, you got different options. Um, you could play games against someone. Um, there will be a game where um, you play with the whole plane, um, any number of users, or just like one player, two player, three. So there'll be different games you could choose from where you can decide if you want to play with the whole plane, play with a group of people that you're on the plane with, play with a group of anonymous people, etc. You can see the highest score um, of the people on the plane and of all time. So you could be like, wow, someone actually scored this on, on this day, on this flight. Um, and if a person wants to take a picture and add their picture to their highest score, hey, why not? Um, There'll be games like word games, etc. Uh, we can create games. I have a few ideas. Um, hedge fund games, you know, stock market games, sales game, memory games, brain HQ games. You get to know one another games, you know, games, not just games to have fun, but games where you have fun and you're helping your brain, you know, you're um, learning something, you know, you're learning a new, um, oh, you're doing what you love. A lot of people who fly business a lot, you know, they may be in hedge fund stocks or they may want to learn how these things work and stuff. So you want to play these games. But there'll be a lot of games. I have a few of them, game ideas as well. Um, as to flying, um, we are flying fine that I won't mess with. Like I said before with the power felt, like um, the plane gets me in the air, takes me where I need to go, and it lands. Uh, I'm very happy with that. I don't think I want to change that, you know. There are always a better way to do something but I believe sometimes if it's not broken, <laughs> don't fix it, okay? So if I'm getting from A to B in the air, just fine. I will get from A and B in the air the same way, just fine, until I need to actually change it for some purpose. I don't need to get to from New York to California any faster, so I'm fine. <laughs> but if we need to change it for other people, I'll, as I mentioned to you, the um, as for energy, flying a plane, perhaps we should look into... Um, I think the power felt, um, let me see, but still use fuel as a backup. If you're just playing, got fuel as a backup, I get on it, okay? Okay, the solar panels, people talk about types of this type of energy, that type of energy, power felt scene. I'm like, how are you going to put a solar panel on a plane? It's going to make more weight to the plane. That means the plane can only carry less. I'm going to make the plane bigger than, ah, yeah. Power felt is kind of light, so if it could actually power the whole plane, then that's not bad because it's extremely, not even kind of light, it's extremely light. Um, but um, please have fuel as backup, thanks. And I'm going to leave it at that. Um, um, basically, I just want to make sure I don't leave anything out here that I wrote down. This I did this all this morning. I just kept putting it off, putting it off. But um, 
so that I have to do is I'm, I'm going to get it in on this challenge um, I can go on but um I don't want to unlock all the uh, <laughs> all what the future holds for the av aviation industry um, you know I still want to innovate more industries in Thomas Edison and uh, Steve Jobs so um, I'm gonna leave some stuff out, out of it <laughs> so you know probably one day I can um, innovate it but um, I believe also you can use your put out oh there is more actually see uh, yeah, this is information I, I, I didn't mind sharing because it, it kind of goes with the rest of what I said. If um, also you can use the app, and I would say airports can have an app to order food from any of their restaurants. Oh, I should have added that in my um, oh, my computer. We'll go back to that. Can't fit that in my 25 words, but um, airport should have an app where I could order my food from any of their restaurants or dining areas and shops, have it waiting for me at the gate, um, see where the closest bathrooms are, how long it will take me to walk to the gate um, from my one flight to my connecting flight, so I could know how long it will take me if I have enough time to make a stop, get to the gate, inform the people at the gate that I'm coming so they don't sell my seat report any issues, etc. Getting um, a, drive, a driver, oh, to one of those uh, go carts to drive me to my gate, etc. See sometimes, see something, say something. So basically, the airport should have an app. Probably they should integrate it with all the airlines apps. I don't know how they would do it, because there's so many so many apps. But probably, the, like Delta, Virgin Airlines, since we're talking about Virgin Airlines, I'm about to say Delta, because I have a story about Delta, but anyways. Um, Virgin Airlines could put in their app the airport so when you're at that airport you can see that airport app and it's integrated in there but basically you could if you see something you could say something through the app you can messages because like if you see something who are you gonna f tell you gotta look oh who do I tell who do I tell it's not like there's a guard standing in every corner but anyways um, and like being able to see how far one gate is from a next I remember um, I flew Delta when I was where was I North Carolina where was I going was it no that wasn't North Carolina I was going to, where was I going? Shoots, Cancun. I was going to Cancun, and we stopped in North Carolina. North Carolina airport is huge, and I remember that from another flight that I was taking, and I stopped in North Carolina. And I had a connecting flight. My boarding pass on my phone didn't show the connecting flight gate. Mind you, I had to fax a letter that I forgot to fax the day before, So, I had, and I had to stop at the bank to get cash out. So I got off, I'm like, um, I have time. Not knowing how far that the gate was on the other side of the airport. Went, found a bank, got the letter notarized and faxed, um, got the money from the bank, then went rushing to my gate. I got to my gate um, 10 minutes before the time it says it was gonna depart, or was it 15 minutes? Either 10 or 15 minutes before I depart. And my plane was already gone. And I said to the lady, she said the plane left 15 minutes ago. So it left like 10 minutes before I actually got there. So technically it left 25 minutes before it was supposed to board. No, was it five minutes? No, I, was, I got there five minutes before it was supposed to. I don't remember. But anyways, they know because they have processed me a new ticket. But anyways, the plane left before it was supposed to. So she's like, oh, the plane took off 15 minutes before it's supposed to or something like that. And I'm like, but you saw that I was here, didn't you? Did you see I caught my flight and that I must have been in the airport? She's like, yeah, we saw that you caught your flight. So why didn't you wait for me? Like, I had to go from one gate all the way to the next. Like, if I had even knew how long it was going to take me, I would have went straight there. But, of course, I didn't because there was no way to know unless, exactly. Even if you flew in that airport before, you wouldn't know. I know it's big, but you don't know where the gate is. But, anyways, my ticket didn't even tell me where my gate is. So, it's actually Delta's fault because their app failed to give me the information. But, I'm not here to, um, to boast about Delta. But, I think you uh, get the point. So, airlines or the someone needs to create somewhere in there an app where I can see what gate and the next gate I'm going to or where I can open up in the app and actually speak to someone and ask them what gate is my flight because when I got off the plane and I started walking is when I opened it to look and I noticed it wasn't there there's no one else around for me to say hey where is where's my gate you know it's no longer showing here I had to go to the board the board is in the middle of the thing got to go all the way to the end of each terminal to actually the gate hall before you see all the gates before you actually see one of those boards with the flight information mind you if you know North Carolina Airport was it North was it North Carolina or was it Charlotte it was Charlotte 
Charlotte is the one with the big airport. Charlotte, not North Carolina. Was it North Carolina? Nope, it's Charlotte Airport. I can't remember. Anyways, let me stop confusing everybody. But I need to fit that in my 25 words. Yeah. Anyways, I'm going to go. Um, hopefully, I don't know if Richard Branson is going to love my uh, 25 words. But um, I love a challenge. Um, I, I'm always looking for a challenge. To me, nothing easy is worth having. It's it's Easiness is just boredom. It leads to boredom. You get bored real quick. Um, I like a challenge. So, any challenge, shoot them my way. Challenge me, challenge me, challenge me. And um, that's what I have to say about the where I see the airlines in the next 10 years. Um, there's a lot more that I see for it as well because there's so much more we can actually do. Um, but we'll see what happens if any of these airline industries are afraid to take the risk, make the change, or if they are actually going to all jump in and get it done. So all you got to do is get it done. All right, good night. Thanks for tuning in. Leonel Sylvester in a crave. Peace out.